Hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. In today's video, I want to show you the general strategy I used to create this antique Chinese wine container. This thing took me about two weeks of free time to finish. I am working full time now, so I think my videos will come out a little bit slower. Uh, apologize for that. I will still try my best to make them as helpful as possible. There is a reason why I chose to make this asset this time, because the last asset I made, the bulk of the work comes from modeling. I think I was spending about 80% of the time trying to finalize the modeling details. And once that was done, the texture itself was actually quite straightforward because I had so many surface details I can bake masks with. For this asset, the situation is a little bit more opposite. Uh, the bulk of the work is on texturing this time because the surface in general is quite flat. To make this thing look interesting, I need to make a lot of a specific mixing of materials and I think I will have to do a lot of projection. That's also the reason why I'm doing this one in Mari this time. I want to quickly show you what the model looks like. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty simple. The main vase body area is very simple modeling. Uh, everybody should be able to do that. And it's just a little animal thing on top. And I also did some damages, some scratches, uh, just to create some variation, some irregularity to help with texturing. But mostly this thing is going to be relied on texturing. Starting the work in Mari, uh, on the corner you can see the reference I'm using mostly. Uh, I'm not following it completely one-to-one -one because I only have this one reference and it's pretty low resolution. I'm just going to use it as a general guide to decide uh, the general material I'm going to use and how they're mixing. So the first thing we do is to use a merge node and put down our first material. And I've decided the base material is going to be a bronze type of material. I have prepared a couple of tileable textures for uh, two to three different kind of material that I know I will use. So the first thing is bronze and I'm going to use a tileable note and just throw a very simple bronze material in it. And uh, the first thing I have to fix is the seams. I will create another merge note right under it and I will create the paint note so I can paint out the seams first. The reason why I'm not using a tri planner for something like this is that uh, with some kind of like cylinder type of shape objects, a tri planner never works that well. It turns to stretch quite a bit. So I rather just use a normal tileable node and paint out the seams. The next material after observing the reference I want to create is this gold paint material. So the process is exactly the same. I'm going to use another merge node, another tileable node, and then I'm going to paint out the seams as well for this one. At this point, I'm not caring about the color too much. Uh, once I start to create different material masks between the different materials, they're going to be standing right next to each other and that's when I will start to adjust the colors and see how they work right next to each other. The next material I want to create that is very obvious on the reference is those green areas and that most likely is patina that develop through time on metal. So the next thing I'm going to create is a layer of green patina material. Again, I'm not worried about the color at this moment very much. I just want to make sure I laid out all the major materials and start to mixing them and see if I can get the look of the reference going. Now we have all the basic material ready. We're going to start to create material masks. And uh, it can be pretty overwhelming looking at all these flat surfaces and uh, try to start to create the breakups. So for me, I definitely want to take advantage of Substance Painter. So I have already baked a high resolution onto my low resolution mesh in Substance Painter and got all the surface detail going. And I throw one of my older metal material on it just to check if the bake is good enough. Um, the material actually looks pretty cool. Maybe um, I can just keep it like this and just finish the video right here and call it a day. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to still try to mimic the reference. 
What I'm going to do is to just create two simple fill layers. I'm going to use one as black and one as white and just start to test out some smart masks that I can use to break up the material. Essentially, I only need black and white masks out of this. So that's why I'm just using simple fill layers. And once I'm happy with everything, I will just export the diffuse map out of this. The first mask I want to create is between the gold paint and the bronze metal underneath it. So for this one, I want to make sure all the edges area are kind of getting scratched off. I do not expect this mask to give me the look that matches the reference. I just need a starting point and the general big breakup is going to be something I will have to paint instead of Mari using stencils. Once I feel like this is good enough as a starting point, I'm just going to export it and import it into Mari. Since we are going to create quite a few different type of material masks, I like to create a backdrop just for those masks. I also like to create the radio transmitter node for each mask, so later I can use them wherever I need them inside of any channel. Now the mask node is set up, I'm going to import the map I got from Substance Painter and uh, I'm going to start painting the main breakup for this material. For the main breakup, I have collected some black and white stencil that I think it can be used as scratched paint. Inside of my gold paint mask, I'm adding a merge node and I'm going to connect a paint node to that merge node and gonna paint my main breakup on that paint node. So I brought in my stencil and uh, I'm going to use the white area of the stencil. So I'm going to set it to luminance and I'm going to set the color that I'm actually painting to black. So I'm reducing the paint. I'm going to use this stencil to quickly block out the general big areas that the paint is getting scratched off. I will have to refine this a lot more later, but right now just the general idea. I'm sure a lot of people are going to wonder, could I have done this just inside of Substance Painter and using procedural maps? Um, I'm sure it's possible. Uh, my goal here is to create something very customized paint and I want the damage to be in very specific areas. You can also do that with um, procedural methods and tallables, and you have to try out probably a lot of different kind of combination to get something that looks not procedural. Uh, it just in the end, I'm not sure which one is faster to me. To make procedural into something very customized also takes a lot of time as well. It's a lot of trying, it's a lot of trying different maps, it's a lot of combination of different maps and in the end to make something that uh, it starts to look very customized. So for me to achieve this kind of very specific look using procedural is definitely possible, but I wouldn't say it's definitely faster. At the end of the day, if you really want to be a good texture artist, you need to be familiar with the procedural part of the work and also customize paint part of the work. It's two skill you have to have. So for me, for this tutorial, uh, showing you the projection, the customized paint is the goal of this tutorial. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it this way as well. Once I started projection, sometimes I realized that the stencil I have on hand is not good enough. And uh, here I will quickly show you how I turn an image into another stencil that I can use. The process is quite simple actually. Just turn this thing black and white and use a level or maybe a curve to try to get a more contrasting image so you can clearly use either the white area of the map or the black area of the map. The only thing I will say is don't crush it too much. Leave some gray in between. Sometimes having some shades of gray can help with the projection as well. I think the gold looks okay so far. Uh, the next thing I would do is to start creating a rough layout of the patina as well. And I'm going to use Substance Painter as a starting point again. I like to try out some of the smart masks that come with the software. A lot of times they work really well. The patina is kind of like all over the place. So I'm just gonna get some rough general coverage. After that, I will use stencil to do some hand painting to give it some sort of order. Here, the green you see is the smart mask I got out of Substance Painter and I'm going to use some other stencil 
that I think can mimic the shape of the patina and start to put the patina in some very specific area that I need them to be. Now I have a general mix of all three material, but they all look pretty flat and boring currently. I want to emphasize the surface detail that I already have on this object. So I'm going to go back to Substance Painter. I'm going to generate some uh, masks for the cavity area or the convex area, which is the area that's more extrude out and try to give the flat texture some shape that matches the surface detail of the object. For example, here for the gold paint, I want the bumpier area to be a little bit brighter than the rest. So I basically add adjustment node to the paint itself and make it a little bit brighter. And this layer is being controlled by a convex map that I exported from Substance Painter. I repeated the same process for the bronze material and the patina material. As you can see, the color map itself is starting to look a lot more complex. Now, I mostly need to work on mixing them better. Right now, it's uh, looking a little bit more cartoony. I feel like the color itself needs a lot more complexity. A little trick I like to do is to find a texture that has a lot of different color on it and it is the same sort of material that my material is and just do some general projection onto my material and it instantly give my material a lot more color variation that wasn't there before. Another trick I like to do is to give uh, the material that's on top some kind of fake depth. We want to feel like the gold paint is sitting on top of the browns. So by painting in some sort of fake shadow, it kind of enhances that look. Don't go too crazy with this trick and make the fake shadow look too obvious. Just a little bit here and there to enhance the difference between materials. At this point, I also started to testing my material inside of my render engine because I know that I will probably have to do most of the fixes once I start rendering. This is when I'm really going to see what's lacking. I have skipped the part where I make all my supporting maps. I have done that in some past videos and I will link them with this one. Also, I am using Arno Layer Shader to put all the different material into its own shader and combine them. I have shown how to do that in a different video and I will link that video as well. In general, after rendering, I realized that I have scratched off my gold paint a little way too much and there's some very ambiguous areas that I'm not capturing at the moment. So I have to go back to add maybe a little bit more gold paint and a little bit more color variation. Another thing I always do mostly towards the end is to add the general dust layer. Again, I exported the basic mask outside of Painter and adjusted inside of Mari. A general dust layer always break up the spec nicely for your material and make things look a little bit more realistic. That is pretty much the last thing I did for this asset. In general, I wasn't too happy with how it turns out. I thought it was only okay, but uh, the point of it is mostly just to show you a different way of working compared to what we did last time. Sometimes you get most of the look of your asset from modeling. Sometimes you get most of it from painting. I hope this is a helpful video for you. And if you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. That is everything I have for you today. And I will see you in the next one.